including MEMS and NEMS, also their applications. He received his MS Engineering and PhD degrees from ISC. The R&D work carried out by him resulted in the realization of several useful sensor devices and measurement systems. He has more than 120 papers published in leading international and national journals, conference proceedings, and invited articles in the encyclopedia. He has six patents to his credit. He is a referee or reviewer for several national and international journals in the area of sensors. He served as a member of the editorial review committee of the Journal of Trijuclic Transactions on Instrumentation and Measurement. Presently, he is a member of the editorial board for two other international journals in the area of sensors. Professor Rajana was a visiting fellow of INSA, uh, Indian National Science Academy, Japan Society for the Promotion of Science programs twice. Also, he was a visiting professor at Tohoku University, Japan. He served as a member of Technical Program Committee for IEEE International Conference on Sensors and chaired several sessions. Also, he served as a member of Steering Committee of the TPC for APCOT, which is the Asia Pacific Conference on Transducers and Micro Nanotechnology. Professor Rajana also served as a member of the TPC for 11th Annual IEEE Conference on Nano and Micro Engineered and Molecular Systems, held during 17th to 20th April 2016 at Japan. Sir is a member of the Board of Management of Defense Institute of Advanced, Advanced Technology at Pune. He is also a member of the Institutional Body of NIMHANS, which is the National Institute of Mental Health and Neuroscience since November 2018. Presently, he is also an ex expert advisory group of DSP. Professor Rajana was elected as a Fellow of Instrument Society of India during 2015. He has guided several research students for PhD and Master's degree, and I'm very proud to say I'm one of his PhD students. He has also successfully completed several sponsored projects from GST, DBT, ISRO, DRDO, DAE, DOE, and MHIT. A warm welcome, sir. Over to you for your talk. One more. Okay, so let's just switch on. Let's Yeah. So turn on. It's on. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. We can put it. This also should be. Ah, is on laser. Oh, pointer is on. Uh, good morning to all once again, and uh, I thank uh, Dr. Vishali for introducing uh, me to this uh, audience. Uh, in fact, I started my research activity in the area of vacuum and later. Uh, I, along with my students and collaborators, focused our work on the application of sensor and sensor development, actually. So that's why uh, for my today's talk, I chosen the title, Recent Trends in Sensor Technology and our developmental activity on nanostructured materials based sensor. Of late, now we focused our activity on the realization sensors using a, a very versatile property of nanostructured materials. So this is the thing. I thought uh, I will give a brief introduction and then I will uh, try to focus on some of the important sensor devices uh, that we developed. And what I am going to present is the hard work of my research student as you mentioned. Okay, this is the general outline of uh, what I uh, plan to talk today. I will give a brief introduction to the topic and then I will concentrate on some of the work that you have done. Uh, carried out on the realization of low cost acoustic sensor, impact sensor, these are also very important uh, type of sensor that are needed in uh, several areas of science and engineering. Then the MEMS based sensors and actuators, uh, these are also very important because everywhere miniaturization is taking place. So MEMS based sensors are becoming very popular. So I will touch upon some of the work that we did on this and then energy harvest devices uh, work that we have done in the recent past. <clears throat> okay. 
सॉरी दिस थिंग इज नॉट विच वन ओ आई टू स्टैंड ओके सो आई थॉट बाय सिंस आई एम फ्रॉम इंडियन साइंस देयर आर मेनी एक्सट्रा स्टफ देयर आई थॉट आई शुड शो द सम ऑफ द व्यूज ऑफ द इंडियन साइंस कैंपस दिस इज एरिया व्यू ऑफ आवर कैंपस दिस इज अराउंड 400 एकर्स इज अ बिग कैंपस एंड एट दैट टाइम महाराजा ऑफ मैसूर डोनेटेड दिस लैंड नाउ नाउ दिस इज द मेन बिल्डिंग वेयर यू नो this and in front of that there is a tata statue and uh, it is and the, the earlier name was tata institute even today people call it as tata institute but the official name is engineering science there are many buildings uh, this of the earliest you uh, know the building that you know came up this thing of course another view this is the main building where you know even uh, the main our register office director's office etc is located as i mentioned the very uh, multi story buildings have come up nowadays and we have uh, more than 40 departments in the campus in fact you know uh, many they used to ask you know especially when we go abroad etc uh, they used to say your institute name is indian institute of science is that only science uh, departments are there so, but uh, although i should mention that the name of our institute is indian institute of science we have almost all branches of science and engineering this is the information of the students because many may aspire to join and you know, after engineering or science but uh, indian institute of science has all the branches of science and engineering so this is the main building i just thought i know i should show that uh, you know those youngsters they intend to uh, come to the institute uh, may have a glimpse of what i am going to show you so uh, i thought i will give a brief introduction as i mentioned we, i started my uh, research activity in the area of vacuum and thin films uh, in fact thin films find applications in many areas Uh, the uh, earliest uh, application of thin films was in the area of optics then uh, no, microelectronics also uh, uh, in a many ways thin films are useful surface engineering sensors and so on the <clears throat> coming to the optics most of you might have you know done some optical experiments uh, during your you know, uh, course in the first year of engineering or second year where we come across the simplest optical device beam splitter hope you might have heard about it will be split the single beam into two is a simplest optical device what it does is a glass plate onto which a reflecting layer is coated this layer normally is coated by thin film uh, uh, deposition process so whenever the light falls on this part of the light get reflected part of the light get transmitted depending on the thickness of the reflecting layer that you coat you can now choose the intensity of the reflected component and as, as the or the, the transmitted component of the light that is uh, getting uh, falling onto the river. like that there are many optical uh, components uh, that we can realize using thin films laser mirrors dichroic mirrors and uh, anti reflecting coating that we use on camera lens things like that so then of course in the area of microelectronics also thin films are, uh, are useful in a big way surface engineering uh, like you now corrosion resistance coatings and etc in mechanical engineering aspect since it is another important area thin films are finding uh, in a application in a very big way uh, especially in the recent years application thin films of sensors is becoming more popular because of several attractive features and versatilities so the field of sensors is uh, very diversified because we have number of different fabrication technologies involved number of parameters that need to be sensed and number of problems that can be solved using suitably designed sensing devices interestingly the various physical and chemical parameters that potentially be sensed can be grouped into major uh, five major groups let us say uh, the parameter that uh, we need to sense can be radiated to parameters like light or x rays it can be a chemical parameters like ph of a solution emitted by a gas or it can be a magnetic parameter sometime the parameter that we need to measure can be a mechanical parameters like a pressure flow level or vibration or it can be a thermal parameter in sensor technology the basic operation what we do is the following the parameter to be measured we call it as a measurement we convert it into electrical signal once it is converted into electrical signal it can be modified amplified or transmitted this thing it's whatever it is the basic operation that we do is uh, you know convert this measurement into a electrical signal so for different type of uh, measurement you need different type of sensing material 
it can be a resistive, resistive a piezoelectric or a capacitance phenomena, various phenomena are being uh, used and the material that we synthesize can be a, a simple tinfoil or a nice structure material and like that. Similarly, if we look at the basic aspect of sensor, the input parameter that we need to sense in case of sensor is a non-electrical but output parameter is electrical in nature. Similar way in you know, engineering aspect and other thing, in addition to sensor, we also hear about actuators. These are also very useful. In some of the engineering problem, we need both sensors and actuators together. So, the basic difference between the sensor and the actuators is in case of actuator, the input parameters is electrical, output parameters is non-electrical like displacement, vibration, things like that. I just thought I should mention because many of the engineering students, uh, uh, they are interested not only in sensors but also the actuators. Uh, but I thought you should know what is the difference, basic difference between the sensors and the actuators. So, in thin film, deviation from the properties of the corresponding bulk materials arise because of small thickness and large surface to volume ratio and the unique physical structure. In some cases, we need very highly arranged crystalline kind of material. In ca uh, some cases, amorphous type of this thing. So, in thin films, we have the versatility to tile the properties suitably, either making them highly crystalline or amorphous in nature. And uh, there are a number of parameters which will influence the properties of the growing field. Most of these thin film deposits are uh, prepared under vacuum environment. Of course, there are uh, cases where thin film can be used without uh, uh, using a vacuum condition. In most of the thin film deposition processes, we use vacuum. So, the properties of the film that we grow depends on the degree of vacuum, residual gas present in the chamber, vacuum chamber, the rate of deposition, whether we do the deposition very slow or fast. And surface condition with substrate. I should mention here uh, the substrate is a general terminology that we use in thin film. Any because thin films, as the name says, they are very thin, they cannot support the themselves. So they, we need some supporting materials. So this supporting material we call it as a substrate. Suppose if it is an optical component, it can be a glass plate, sometimes it is a quartz, but in engineering applications, it can be a metal or a non-metal or in you know, mechanical engineering like uh, what I mentioned in uh, frictionless ball bearings etc, corrosion resistant, it can be a metal, but in electronics it can be a silicon. So, substrate is a very common terminology that we use. So, the surface condition of the substrate also influences the property of the growing film, whether it is rough or smooth, uh, especially for you know, uh, optical uh, applications like reflecting coating etc, we need a very smooth surface polished surface, whereas in some cases deliberately they make the surface rough. And substrate temperature, while growing the film, whether you maintain the substrate at room temperature or at higher temperature also decides the property of the film that we grow. These are some of the versatilities of thin film technology. And it is not only that uh, the uh, condition that we maintain for the substrate during the growth process, but also even after the portion of the film, Film properties can also be modified after the deposition by post deposition treatment. It can be simple heat treatment. One can also irradiate with iron beams, it will modify the properties. Sometimes people irradiate with a laser beam, it will modify. Also, it can, subject, it can be subjected to microwave plasma. These are all the possibilities that we can modify the property of the film even after the growth by the process called post deposition treatments. So, I just wanted to highlight this because thin film technology is a versatile technology so that we can tailor the properties of the material suitably depending on the application whether it is for optical, mechanical or electrical application. So, if I look at the literature, I mean the methods that are available for the uh, preparation of thin film, we have a large variety of uh, uh, techniques. We can broadly classify them into physical vapor deposition or chemical method. Under the physical vapor deposition, we have mainly operation sputtering. There are sub you know, uh, groups like that. Similarly, chemical deposition, we have electro deposition, chemical deposition, uh, CVD, and other methods. Of course, if you do not have this, these uh, deposition uh, uh, techniques require uh, sometimes expensive equipment. But some cases, now if you do not have this instrumentation, you can still prepare same film by simpler methods like simple deep coating, spinning, solution coating, spraying, or polymerization methods. I think these are the methods you know, we teach uh, 
for the students uh, over a semester, but I will not go into the details of this thing, just to give an idea what are all the techniques that are available, I just uh, show this. So this is the simplest uh, evaporation technique. What we do is, we take the material to be deposited in the form of a filament or a boat, and this is a vacuum chamber. We remove the gas, create a vacuum as low as about 10 to the power minus 5 tar, minus 6 tar. We heat the material. Material melts, come to the vapor state, and uh, now it get coated on the substrate. This is the simplest technique to prepare a thin film vacuum operation. This is a, since we are heating by uh, passing electric current through the, uh, the source material, either a filament or a board, it is called resistive heating method. So, this is the simplest method, but it has its own limitations. Just to give an idea uh, how we prepare thin film, I just uh, made this uh, simple diagram. Similarly, this is a vacuum chamber uh, system that we had in our lab. So, there are many accessories like you now the, um, the resistive source, the vacuum pump, the chiller for cooling the diffusion pump, etc. I will not go into the de details of this one. These are the internal uh, details of this, uh, the heating arrangement, uh, thickness monitors, so many things, a choron baffle uh, for creating the vacuum in the chamber, vacuum pumps, etc. So, so many accessories that I will not go. Similar to evaporation, there is also a technique called sputtering. This is a schematic of the sputtering technique. It has its own advantages, especially if you need a very good uh, you know, addition for the film, etc. In mechanical engineering, other this thing, we go for sputtering. Of course, even for sensor development, etc. So, in this case, instead of heating the material uh, to uh, come to the vapor state, what we do, material to be deposited is taken in the form of a target. And then, you know, uh, we have the substrate on the lower side. We apply a potential between the target and the substrate, which is at a ground potential. Gas gets ionized. These ions uh, go and hit the target and remove the target material, and the material get deposited. This is a very little sophisticated technique. And uh, uh, here, especially, you know, if you want to deposit uh, expensive material like uh, gold, platinum, things like that, there won't be any wastage of material. It also provides the flexibility to have good addition, etc. I think. Uh, uh, just to give a blinks of what is sputtering, I shown this, I will not go into the details. <coughs> uh, this is a complete system. What I shown in the earlier, this one is only a chamber part. There are many accessories like for creating the vacuum, we have a vacuum pump, diffusion pump, electronic trap, rotary pump, vacuum gauges, power supply for applying a potential, so many other things. Those are interested in instrumentation. I think they, uh, you can uh, appreciate the various components that are involved in the preparation of this. So, this is how the process of sputtering uh, take place. We have a target which is at a negative potential, like a substrate on uh, which is at a ground potential. Whenever the ions, they go and hit the target, target material gets removed and they settle down on the substrate. This is an autumn by item condensation process. Depending on the potential applied, the various uh, sputtering process parameters, we can tailor the properties of the uh, film get, get, get deposited on the substrate. So, if you use a, a direct cutter, a current with a two electrode, it is called DC dash sputtering. There are various modifications of this. If you use a third electrode in order to improve the addition process and the deposition rate, it is called triad sputtering. Most of the metals can be deposited by DC sputtering technique, but if you want to deposit insulating material, the versatile technique is R sputtering, radio frequency uh, uh, supply that we use. I think uh, I will not go into the uh, details of this, but this is a simple schematic uh, uh, to show how this sputtering process takes place. And uh, this is uh, now one of uh, the earliest uh, uh, sputtering uh, chamber that, we, that was made by my students in the laboratory. This is a chamber, this is a target, because whenever the ions, they go hit the target, targets get heated. In order to keep it cool, you continuously circulate the cooling water. So, this is a plasma that we see inside the chamber. Sometimes, especially for a short and metal deposition, glass chamber is okay. But if you are going to do or sputtering, and sputtering for a longer duration, sputtering this glass chamber is not ideal. We go for a metal chamber so that uh, uh, we can do the deposition. So, it's just to give an idea how the plasma looks like, I have taken this slide. Uh, this is a metal chamber. So, sorry, the pointer is not working. So, this is a metal chamber, box type metal chamber. This was also made by in our laboratory by our student. Lower side, what is shown is a pump, diffusion pump, that by a rotary pump. 
this is a power supply, this is a gas uh, uh, cylinder, normally uh, the inert gas argon is used. Sometimes in order to do the reactor sputtering, in addition to argon, we also uh, use uh, reactive gas like oxygen, then it is called react sputtering. There are various versions of that. Okay. So, with this uh, brief uh, introduction about what is thin film and how we prepare thin film, I will now go on to some of the type of uh, uh, the thin film based sensor that we developed in our laboratory. I thought I will consider this uh, low cost user electric thin film based acoustic sensor. In fact, acoustic sensors are an important link in sound reproduction and communication system. Application areas of acoustic sensors include consumer products, space, they are also useful in space, medical, and industrial process and in fact human ear is a natural acoustic transducer with uh, tolerance to wide amplitude variations however either it fails or becomes apparently impossible to use in hazardous and radiation environments and remote areas therefore there is an increasing interest to develop acoustic sensor which can be used to sense high intensity sound and can be employed in adverse environmental condition with this in view we developed some uh, acoustic sensor in Typically, the transcription principle used in echo sensor include that can be based on piezoelectric, piezoresistive, or capacitance phenomena. What we have chosen is the principle of piezoelectric effect carried out the development of four pounds and four pounds today of low cost thin film echo sensor suitable for high intensity sound up to a decibel of uh, 150 dB. So, uh, we developed the acoustic sensor based on piezoelectric thin film to convert acoustic signal into proportional electrical output. Advantages of, uh, advantages of using the piezoelectric transducer include ease of processing and robust design. Also, piezoelectric acoustic sensors which do not involve air gap are not most robust uh, fabrication process than capacitive sensors. So, this is the uh, schematic of the, uh, the acoustic sensor that we develop. The body of the, uh, the blue color what is shown is a body of the acoustic sensor which is made of perspex material which is electrically insulating light and transparent and it is very easy for machining it is not very expensive it is a very economical material and what is shown on the lower side here this is a metal diaphragm stainless steel diaphragm and what is shown in the yellow color uh, I mean yes on the here is a piezoelectric thin film deposited by sputtering technique and that again on the top there are metal electrodes to take electrical leads. So, lower side uh, from the metal diaphragm, one lead is taken, and the top metal electrode uh, deposited on the piezoelectric like thin film leads are taken out, and this is how the whole assembly looks like photograph. And the uh, diaphragm of this uh, sensor is made of special quality stainless steel SS304L, which is a low carbon content material, can be exposed to high temperature up to about 900 degrees Celsius and it has got uh, good elastic properties sorry I think it is not moving I think oh, oh sorry. okay so we have chosen zinc oxide as a good feasibility thin film uh, uh, as a sensing film for our acoustic sensor and uh, advantages include a better feasibility coupling compared to other non ceramic material greater flexibility of a sequential phase and it is a compositionally simple piezoelectric material which can be uh, uh, sputtered uh, as a good piezoelectric film on a variety of some substrate including stainless steel. Okay. So, there are a number of parameters in the sputtering process which need to be optimized. Uh, so, what is what the technique that we used is called the DC reactive magnetron sputtering. Sputtering was done in the presence of oxygen and organ gas. These are various uh, parameters in sputtering like base pressure, working pressure, uh, the combination of uh, ratio of the argon and oxygen, target substrate separation, substrate temperature, many things. So, in order to get a good piezoelectric uh, zinc oxide, all these parameters need to be optimized. So, this optimization was done by my student. These are the optimized parameters. So, and again, after the preparation of uh, zinc oxide film, in order to make sure that you know, it is uh, piezoelectric in nature, we are characterized by some uh, indirect method like X-ray diffraction, photometry method, etc., which gives an idea uh, whether the deposited film is piezoelectric or not. These are the indirect methods. There is also a direct method called cantilever technique. This is a simple technique. What, uh, what we have done is the zinc oxide the film was deposited in a cantilever strip. Sorry, the pointer is not working. Uh, this is a stainless steel strip onto which we deposited the 
piezoelectric uh, thin film, zinc oxide film. And on top of it, uh, we deposited the metal electrode and leads were taken out. And this was connected to the oscilloscope. So when we subjected to mechanical deformation, this cantilever beam is subjected to mechanical deformation. If the deposition, uh, deposited film is piezoelectric, the charge, it develops a charge. Charge gets converted onto the voltage, which can be seen on the oscilloscope. The sort of, this is a simple experiment that we did. So this is a schematic of the arrangement that we use. So what is shown here, sorry, uh, this is a strip onto which zinc oxide film is uh, uh, deposited. And uh, this is an, uh, uh, the, uh, the arrangement uh, to deflect the cantilever beam. Uh, to, the, it will attract when it is energized. Then we uh, remove the potential for this one. So it releases. So cantilever beam starts vibrating. So if the deposited film is space electric in nature, so charges will develop and we get a corresponding voltage in the oscilloscope. That's what it is shown here. Oh yeah, I think this is not so clear. So this you know, out signal, output signal that we ca get can be seen on the oscilloscope. This is the case in the top side when the uh, cantilever starts vibrating initially from the upward uh, direction or otherwise depending on the signal that we get on the lower side. So of course this you know, dies, uh, the amplitude de decays with time, but however we can make out whether the deposited the film is piezoelectric in nature or not. After the confirmation of this, uh, these are now, we tried different substrates. In, in addition to a stainless steel, we tried a phenox, aluminum strip, kapton and mylar. We got a very good response with the phenox, which is a very flexible material with a good elastic property. There are some of the output signals that you could record. Then this uh, zinc oxide thin film with optimized parameter was deposited into polycircular diaphragms. Subsequently, silver electrode deposition was carried out onto zinc oxide thin film, resulting in the MIM structure, metal insulator, metal configuration. The top electrode was patterned in a, in a later phase of experiment in order to improve the sensitivity of the acoustic sensor. And we found that segmenting the electrode announces sensitivity and uh, necessary stress and strain distribution analysis on the diaphragm was done uh, using a census. census uh, 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 simulation studies. These are some of the simulation studies uh, that we did to have an idea about the distribution of stress. Uh, this is a deflection of the diaphragm. So this gives some idea about uh, the distribution of electrode arrangement for this one and we use this data. And then the performance study of the uh, this acoustic sensor uh, was uh, done using the uh, acoustic calibrator. This was available at NAL, National Aerospace Laboratories. So the output uh, characteristic that we studied include frequency response, linearity and sensitivity. These are some of the re responses that we got, the variation of the output response with the frequency. Now some of the details like diaphragm thickness of 40 micrometer, diaphragm diameter about 1.5 centimeter, 1 centimeter. This is a pat non pattern and these are the output that we got for a de different decibel sound pressure levels, uh, 120 dB you now which is shown in the dark color other one 130 and 40. So you can see that the response is almost you know, flat, uniform. So and then we also did this uh, with a segmented arrangement, electrode arrangement and we got an announcement of signal of about 30 percent. So this is a comparison of the same. I will not go into the detail. What we found was that uh, pattern in the electrode suitable results in improvement of sensor response by about 35 percent. So the acoustic sensor developed exhibit nearly flat frequency response and linearity up to 150 dB sound pressure level. In comparison with the general acoustic sensor, the presently developed acoustic sensor is attractive in view of low cost, less weight and similar fabrication method. When it is low cost, it can be used as a disposable type sensor in case of its use in hazardous and radiation environment as well as in practical applications. In fact, uh, the same uh, kind of you know, the piezoelectric thin film if we use using uh, use on a silicon substrate and we can make a MEM spaced uh, uh, acoustic sensor which is very much there in the market. So with this I will uh, move on to the another type of sensor that we developed using a piezoelectric thin film that is impact sensor. So impact is a short period force and it is expected that sensor for impact should have a fast response and impact sensors are needed in several areas of science and engineering. So typical application of impact sensor include automobiles, aircraft, in defense also they are useful, railways, moon mission studies, oceanography, material testing, etc. 
So what we have done uh, is the following. Uh, this is a prototype of a prototype a schematic showing the prototype of the impact sensor that we uh, developed. It essentially involves a simple mechanical assembly consisting of a mechanical cantilever sensing element with a piezoelectric thin film fixed inside a round shaped flexible enclosure and sealed to form an impact sensor. This is a rubber ball cut into two halves. So in one half, you know, the cantilever beam is mounted and it is closed like this and the leads are taken out. So if you do so uh, and the necessary, you know, the charge amplifier was also made by my student. This is a charge amplifier circuitry and the ball that is shown is an impact sensor, this one. So in order to uh, study this response, we have used a load cell. What we have done is this impact sensor a draft from different heights to make an impact with the, uh, the, uh, the load cell plate and the response was recorded. It is a simple arrangement made in the laboratory and uh, some of the response that we got is shown here. See when you, the impact sensor make a first impact, this is the maximum amplitude that we get, the signal decays and it rebounds make a second impact compared to the uh, the magnitude of the first impact signal, this is lower and uh, you know, it uh, comes down with a subsequent impact, third, fourth, etc. So by analyzing the signal that we get like this, depending on the frequency, the magnitude of the uh, first impact, second impact, the time, the gap between the first impact and the second impact, etc., we can make a careful analysis and get an impact information about the impact of the sensor with the body which it makes. So this is very uh, uh, useful in uh, structural engineering, uh, component design, etc. And the another typical application of this is the following. What we have done is we took a, a circularly shaped uh, uh, diaphragm like this, the base uh, circular uh, uh, diaphragm onto which you know the what is shown is in the uh, green color is the piezoelectric thin film. On top again a metal electrode. So leads were attached one on the diaphragm, another on the top electrode. And using this, we have made another type of uh, sensor. Uh, this is how the exported view of the sensor that we made. This is a HDP housing that we made. This is a diaphragm onto which we form the piezoelectric right thin film. These are all the sub plates. When you put, assemble together, it looks like this. This is a exploded view of various subcomponents and final assembled view of the packaged impact sensor. This is for a different application. Uh, this is you now the cross sectional view of the sensor and this is a photograph of this. So I have shown the uh, a coin by the side of the photograph which uh, assembled the uh, impact sensor to get an idea about the overall size of this one. So uh, the response of this sensor we studied using an arrangement like this. The sensor is located here. Uh, this is the sensor. This is a gloss tube and this is uh, the power supply uh, with an amplifier circuitry. The output is connected with an oscilloscope. What we have done is uh, we took a, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the rubber ball, the metal ball and uh, no, the plastic ball and dropped these balls from different heights onto uh, to make an impact with the sensor. and. Uh, we recorded the output signal. So what we done, we took iron ball and a glass ball and a ball made of wood and a plastic with a different density of course, with the same uh, diameter. So each one of them were dropped from different heights, glass tube acts as a guiding tube actually. So when they are dropped from different heights, they make a collision with the pack sensor, the response was recorded. So. Some of the data that we got was you now plotted here. This is the drop height versus the uh, the impact force in uh, millinewton, and then uh, the corresponding uh, the data for each one of them is shown. I will not go into the detail. Just of course, these are all the materials engineering part, uh, which you know the zinc oxide thing, the structure was analyzed using SCM analysis, etc. And then of course, some more data about. Uh, uh, each one of the this is the case with the iron ball different dropped from different heights and uh, this is the, the uh, maximum amplitude for the first uh, impact second impact and like that so when we drop uh, the same uh, uh, ball of same diameter they made of glass the typical data so detail analysis was the, done uh, with the signal that we got i will not go into the details then we calculated the, the drop height versus the output voltage 
and then the network done etc these are really useful to analyze and get an information about the kind of impact it makes and the material with so suppose there is a material which is not known as unknown material by having this kind of best fed data uh, data we can also find out the unknown material which makes an impact with it so these are some of the for the study the another very interesting application of this impact sensor that we uh, made by my students is that uh, especially in uh, you know milk adulteration or adulteration the drug etc so what we have done is we took a serine serine in which the uh, the either you know milk pure milk or whatever it is so it was made to drop onto the impact sensor by drop by drop so when you get the signal we can analyze for example this is a pure milk signal what is shown in the black color any adulterated this kind of although it may not give it immediate but by effect this thing we can make out is a pure or impure similarly similar kind of thing can be uh, uh, adopted if there is a adulteration in the drug for example so this are some of the initial studies so more detail this thing we analysis it then i think we, is just to take uh, the liquid in the syringe and just drop it you get that thing yeah it's a simple setup is a charge amplifier and the output voltage you are seeing on the oscilloscope so for a fixed okay. check okay 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 so uh then piezoelectric thin film array for uh, monitoring the impact events etc this is a little bit you know similar with this thing i think uh, because of lack of time i think skip this and then uh, we also done uh, the development of mem space sensor uh, uh, the advantage of mem space sensor the miniaturization and less weight the fabrication and less mass production and low cost improved performance reliability because miniaturization has become the order of the day everywhere reduction of size the best example that i give is a mobile phone although people used to have a land phone now they are almost outdated but similar thing is happen in sensor technology whatever it was available in the bulk uh, people want to develop using a miniature version where in mems technology is very important mems stands for micro electromechanical system it has both mechanical components and electrical components so we did some work on this one so uh, i thought of taking an example of a pressure transducer uh, which is basically electromechanical uh, uh, system which is useful in measurement of pro a uh, uh, pressure in process industries automobile engine depth study in oceanography in many areas including biomedical area uh, this is some of the biomedical uh, the pressure sensor that we developed the earliest one using a metal diaphragm which did for space application these are the strain gauges that we deposited in the technology and this complete assembly this is only the diaphragm part when assembled together with other uh, 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 parts it appears like this then we extended this using silicon technology miniature version this is how it looks like this i will not go into details because of the um, uh, limitation of time these are the, the there are different process, uh, processes involved the most commonly used process is called bulk micro machining process which will have so many steps the portion of insulating layer patterning etc and finally uh, vapor bonding attaching leads a dry etching all those thing because of the limitation of time i'll skip this and this is how the cross section view look like this so these are the the cut out portion on the top we have the uh, the thin film strain gauges uh, which are connected in the wishstone bit configuration this fully made active lost to metal sealing and then finally packaging packaging is a very important uh, step uh, so by suitable you know packaging process Uh, uh we can make the pressure sensor either as an absolute type or a relative type or a differential type suppose if a pressure transducer measure pressure with respect to vacuum we call it as a absolute type pressure it measures the absolute type pressure a transducer so suppose if a pressure transducer measure pressure with respect to local atmosphere then we call it as a relative type pressure transducer most of the biomedical type of pressure transducer that we use we see in the hospital or relative type or a gate type pressure transducer sometime one will not be interested in measuring uh, the absolute or relative type but one will be interested in knowing the difference between two unknown pressures say p1 and p2 in that case we call it as if the pressure transducer gives an indication of the difference between the two unknown pressure p1 and p2 it is called a differential type pressure transducer depending on finally how we do the packaging 
we can make it as a, either an absolute type or a relative type or a differential type. So in fact, all the tries we could realize. Lastly, I thought I will touch upon MEMSpace space relative microjet, which has uh, several applications. Maybe another one or two minutes I can take. Oh. Uh, so this is the silicon based technology where we have two diaphragms. This is one part, lower part, onto which we deposited uh, a thin film sandwiched between two metal layers. On the top is a silicon diaphragm with a small hole of the order of two microns. So both these diaphragm of fabrication, they bonded. This is an interface. So this one, uh, this is a, here actually the piezoelectric thin film, piezoelectric uh, material that you deposited is used not as a sensor but as an actuator. In the beginning, I mentioned that you now we need both sensors and actuator. In this, when you subject it to electrical potential, when you apply for the piezoelectric material, it deforms. So this deforms make the silicon silicon diaphragm to de, you know go undergo some you know, compression or this one. So this uh, kind of uh, this one, uh, what it does is, let us say this small volume, uh, which is formed due to the bonding of the two silicon diaphragm, is of the order of say few microliters or whatever it is. If you fill the liquid in this and then uh, um, uh, uh, apply a potential for this phaser at this thing, because of the minute deformation of the lower side thinner diaphragm, there will be a built up of a pressure of this liquid and this gets thrown thrown out. So this has the application as a microject in you know drug delivery, etc. So one of my students is a sponsored kid, uh, candidate from SL Chandigarh. He did this as a part of his PhD program, and uh, now this is how uh, uh, that we use the phaser. Thing. These are some of the uh, analysis that we did. This is silicon diaphragm onto which the initially piezoelectric crystal we used and uh, tested the property of uh, this actuation, and they later we replaced with a thin film. And uh, the performance was studied using a system uh, laser vibrator arrangement, uh, which is available in our institute. This is a system. Uh, these are some of the data. Deflection measurement using laser vibrometer with a potential 60 volts and 10 kilohertz. And uh, some more data. And there is an animation. I don't know whether it is works, etc. When you apply a potential, it starts. Uh, 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 like this, it starts moving up and down because of this uh, minute up and down movement of the uh, lower side uh, uh, silicon diaphragm. Uh, pressure of the liquid in this you now small volume it increases and makes the liquid to throw out. So this uh, has the application in controlled uh, drug delivery in biomedical application, things like that. It also has many other things. Yeah, something like this. Uh, so these are some of the you now responses at uh, now lower frequencies like 500 hertz. And uh, on the top side diaphragm, which I mentioned that uh, the holes of the order of few microns, this was done by laser drilling technique, which was available at, Ch uh, at Chandigarh. This is now of the order of 0.2 mm, that 0.1 mm. Depending on the type of liquid that you want to jet, we can choose the different diameter for the holes in silicon diaphragm. These are some of the things that I said. Uh, then, of course, uh, lastly, I don't know whether I have time. Piezoelectric nano generator also we developed. This was the PhD work of one of my students. Presently, he's at Korea. Uh, nano rods that we use. Piezoelectric nano rods uh, is an interesting this thing. Same material can be synthesized using thin film technique as a, either nano rods or nano plates. We have synthesized the same zinc oxide as a nano rod. If the combination of thin film and other processes include, I will not go into this except that I will uh, show the Uh, these are some of the application of uh, phase electron generator. Uh, again, we used, uh, there are different uh, phase electric material, but uh, since we had the experience of zinc oxide, we have chosen the same zinc oxide. And synthesis of zinc oxide, we are used by a hydrothermal method. Advantages I mentioned. These are the different steps that are uh, really needed. Substrate uh, preparation and cleaning, phenoxy have used, deposition of chrome uh, gold, uh, with a chromium back layer for addition and then deposition of zinc, zinc oxide as a seed layer of 100 nanometer and we synthesized by a controlled uh, temperature process 
to grow nano rods, zinc oxide nano rods. How they look like? These are some of the process steps for the synthesis of uh, zinc oxide nano rods, and these are the electron microscopy pictures, top side view of the nano rods, zinc oxide nano rods uh, that you could uh, synthesize. Some more data of you know the uh, the uh, size and the length of the nano rod that we could right? electron microscopy pictures. Uh, there are various parameters we can optimize to get the required size of the nano rods of zinc oxide and the thing. So these are some of the optimized parameters we analyzed using XRD other thing, and uh, we have used these uh, zinc oxide nano rods to fabricate then a generator. And uh, these nano rods, when they synthesize, you know, they become very delicate. So in order to make them robust, we filled with a polymer PMMMA so that uh, they become robust and strong. And the top side uh, should be made uh, uh, reachable for the electrical conducting layer. Therefore, this top PMMA layer was removed by using called a dry etching technique. Uh, so that's how the top side looked. Uh, look like this and uh, on the top side we coated a metal uh, gold electrode and formed a generator like this. So these are the nano rods because the nano rod on top side we removed by dry etching technique and again we press this kept on layer deposited the gold to form a, a nano generator. So we took one lead from the bottom metal uh, gold electrode and the top one here and then we realized the nano generator. So there are some of the results that we got. I think there is also a video and uh, when we subjected to repeated uh, impact, this is how the signal that we got. Maximum we could get about 0.93 volts. And there is a video if time is there, I can show. This is how the, uh, one second. So this is a small uh, motor. Uh, so when it's energy, it starts rotating. This yellow curve, what is shown is an nano generator. So when it starts rotating, the projection of this uh, motor keeps touching periodically and we get an output from the nano generator. Let me see whether it works actually. Oh, oh yeah, one second. Uh, it is setting the things. That's a leave it here. Uh, this is the input uh, power for the motor. On the oscilloscope, even everything, we have to set the gap between the, you know, uh, the projection of the motor and other setting. So when everything is set, you can see the output from the nano generator. So he's setting the, uh, yeah, it starts rotating and periodically it keeps touching the nano generator and uh, the voltage generated can be seen on the oscilloscope. Yeah. So you have to set the, you know, gap, etc. suitably. So this is how we get, this has the application in uh, energy house vesting, especially uh, uh, in, uh, yeah, that's how it does. So this is the work of one of my student presently is a postdoc at uh, Korea. So I think I will stop at this stage. I have few other things, but I thought as a uh, sensor device, many of these youngsters will be interested. So if I, I, I hope that it will inspire uh, any students to take up the area of sensor as a research topic in their own. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions, I will put you. Okay. Any questions from the students? Yeah. This is very good job. We can take the questions later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Time. Thank you all for your uh, sir, patience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. Thank you. Not take a lot of time. <laughs> okay. Our next speaker is. Uh, yeah. Just one minute. You will participate. Professor Adana and then